Dinosaur Island is the most confusing request I have ever gotten. People say things about this that do not seem to properly reflect the actual movie at all. The only good part is the T-Rex. What? This thing? That T-Rex model has less polygons than a Nintendo 64 model. It has that main character guy from Star Wars in it. Really? This guy? That actor doesn't look anything like Darth Vader. You mean that dino porn movie? <laughs> Whoa, dude, seriously? Those are little kids, man. Do I really have to pull out the FBI memes already? So what's going on here? Well, Dinosaur Island is such a generic title that there are three different movies with that name and I'm going to review all of them to make sure everyone is satisfied. Except you, you creep. Do you think God stays in heaven because he too lives in fear of what he's created? Dinosaur Island not to be confused with Dinosaur Island or Dinosaur Island is the first and last movie to feature a feathered T-Rex. This movie was made by Matt Drummond, an Australian visual effects artist who somehow acquired a decent budget to write and direct his own dinosaur movie. Its official trailer has a pretty high amount of dislikes but I can't hate the guy for at least trying. I really don't want to go too harsh on indie filmmakers, especially now that I know there's always a chance they might actually watch my videos. But this joke just write itself, did you have to call your production company an extinct production? So the movie opens with a British teacher lecturing about metamorphic rocks and the most insufferable teacher's pet I have ever seen. How many examples of each, sir? Will ten be sufficient? Three will be fine. Our protagonist is this boy who chit chats with his neighbor but the teacher only takes the black boy to the front to humiliate him in front of the entire class. That's racist. Anyway, it turns out he's a smart ass too. Doesn't that get you immediately excited for all the techno babble we're gonna hear throughout this movie? Geological metamorphosis occurs when a protolith is subjected to temperatures greater than 150 degrees Celsius and pressures of 1500 bars. This causes physical and or chemical metamorphosis in the original protolithic structure. Well at least it sounds like the director actually sat through some geology classes in his life. Or maybe he just copied this from Wikipedia, that's how cynical the internet has made me. His mom takes him to the abandoned house of their old crazy aunt. Well unfortunately a bunch of old books isn't gonna help sell this place. Hey. Can I keep this? No, come on, put it back. Lady, it's so hard to get the modern youth excited in books instead of their phones and you're going to deny him that? Other parents would kill to have their kids pick up a book. He finds a quartz hidden in the bookshelf that he takes with him on a plane flight. Apparently, that crystal was actually an infinity stone because it makes the plane fly into a cloud and everyone except him gets snapped out of existence. He's stranded on an island with a beach that is totally real and not a sound studio where you can hear the boy crystal clear without any waves or winds or seabirds. Does anyone know where I am? Well apart from that they really filmed this on an actual pacific island and the jungles and plains make for some pretty nice scenery. The abandoned shipwrecks also look pretty nice. But that's not what you're here for, you're here for the dinosaurs. These close-up shots look really good, but once you see the entire raptor, it's uh, it looks like a loose ray painting come to life. On the one side, that's good because I love his art. On the other side, that's not so good because he tends to go overboard with colors and wattles and other artistic liberties that make his raptors look more like a six-foot turkey. And even though I am the last person to complain about feathered dinosaurs, I know I'm going to get shit for this if I don't point out that despite the effort, the arms of the raptors are still wrong. Dinosaurs could not pronate their arms like that. Even the Jurassic games got that detail right. And Romeosaurids had large wing feathers attached to their arms, even the big flightless ones like Dakota Raptor. And if you gotta ease the general audience into finding your feathered dinosaurs threatening, maybe don't give them bright blue naked heads with downy feathers that look like the receding hairline of an old man. I know they're probably based off cassowaries and cassowaries have become quite infamous, but I think a more eagle-like design with a menacing wingspan would work wonders to erase those dislikes. Well, the acting would probably cancel that out. Okay, not good. That's your reaction to seeing a real dinosaur? So before this turns into a shitty version of the Revenant bear attack, a girl shows up to rescue him. They distract the dinosaurs with his colored shirt because these raptors like shiny, colorful stuff. Just like the raptors in Primeval. I'm surrounded by idiots. 
She takes him to her pretty fancy treehouse where she's been studying dinosaurs for years and apparently had no problem surviving with perfectly fine clothes in the middle of this dinosaur infested jungle. And of course she has an even more ridiculous accent than he does. How rude of me. You must be thirsty after your ordeal. No, look, I'm fine. The movie explains that she's actually from the 1950s, but I don't know. She sounds more like a hundred years older than that. I really need to use your phone. Phone? Oh, you mean telephone. Sorry, I don't have one. Besides, who would I call? What about a mobile? And this feels like I'm watching a school stage play. So you're telling me those things were dinosaurs? Oh, now you realize that? I mean, I guess someone who only knows the scaly raptors from Jurassic Park might not recognize them if they look like this, so I'ma let this one slide. This 15 year old girl is also an all knowing paleontology expert, so yeah, our two protagonists are both smart asses, which means I'll have to be extra smart ass too, at the expense of my audience. Like for example this gigantic spider here is something that would have never existed in real life. The whole myth of giant prehistoric spiders got started with Megarachne, a fossil that turned out to be from a sea scorpion. And that spider is way past the physical limitations of arthropod size anyway. Ironically, there was a giant spider in the Jurassic games too, but I didn't mention that in my review because it was literally just in one shot and never seen again. Does this movie do anything with that? So now the girl introduces us to the mascot of this movie, an unironically beautiful looking Cynonithosaurus. <coughs> that just got ruined by the sounds and animation. So this raptor's gimmick is that he can mimic sounds, because Matt Drummond likes ripping off other dinosaur media. Like for example this Arthropleura that rears up like a cobra, just like in Primeval and Prehistoric Park and walking with monsters. Anyway, the boy squishes it with a book, because he's too dumb to just take a few steps back. That's not a centipede. That's an arthropleura. One minute I'm checking out your glowy things, and the next I'm being attacked by that, that arthropleura. Exactly. Look, I know you want to teach kids some paleontology in your movie, but having this girl just constantly correct the protagonist is just going to make her look obnoxious. And after inspecting it for half a minute, she freaks out and squashes it too. What a hypocrite. You would not believe your eyes if 10 million fireflies size. Does this director have a bug crushing fetish? That is disgusting. Next morning they explore the island because the girl regularly loots the cargo of the planes that get lost here. Those... Those are dinosaurs! Why are you still surprised at this point? This is amazing! I can't believe after Dino Time I would ever see another children's movie where the look at how amazing dinosaurs are scene happens halfway through the movie. Well, the Iguanodon models look pretty nice. They're just a little bit too lanky. Certainly better than just straight up ripping off primeval raptors. Like come on, if I see a black and white raptor with spiky feathers and blue markings around the face, of course I'm gonna think of primeval. So they get to a green screen that is supposed to be inside the cargo plane and after the boy gets disturbingly obsessed with chocolate they are captured by a tribe of black aborigines. And apparently this island does not only inhabit creatures from other time periods but other planets as well because there's a giant monster plant with freaking eyes and tentacle vines. Wait. Did this children's movie just seriously kill off a black kid? Instead of a wimpy stick just use your own arms bitch! Wow they actually forgot to put the CGI vines into this shot and I'm trying to defend this movie. So the aborigines save the kids and take them to their shitty little Wakanda knockoff where they have also captured mammoths and pterosaurs. Another captive explains to our protagonist how these quartz crystals are causing things to teleport here and that there's a huge cave full of these crystals that might be able to take them home. Now they just have to get out of the cage. Kate, wake up, we're getting out of here.
Well, that was easy. They escape on a terrace, and while it's pretty much a fantasy design anyway, for some reason they state that only the juvenile pterosaurs are fluffy and that they lose their fluff as an adult. There's no reason to think that a real life adult pterosaur wouldn't keep it. The pterosaur defends the kids from a really fast Arthropleura, and I can no longer pretend like the animation acting isn't really bad. Junior. But now we finally arrived at the moment you've probably all been waiting for. The one and only Tyrannosaurus Freaking Rex! And of course a new T-Rex deserves a new fitting song entrance. This T-Rex design is bold. BOLD I say! And it opens up the huge can of worms that is feathered tyrannosaurs. So to keep it short, T-Rex had feathered ancestors and there are even fossils of feathered tyrannosaurs like D-Long and U-Tyrannus. However, due to its massive adult size, it's debated whether T-Rex would have been only feathered as a juvenile and lose the feathers as it grew larger to not overheat. Fossilized T-Rex skin has been described that looks like it's just lots of tiny scales. But some paleo bloggers have pointed out that it could also be featherless fleshy skin like in fowl or cassowaries. But no matter what you think, the bright blue feathers of this design simply are not a good look. There's some Japanese dinosaur documentary and while the head of their T-Rex looks more like the one from Jurassic Park, I really like the brown feather coat they gave it. There's some blue on the neck, but overall the colors are very subdued instead of A little advice, if you want to call out Jurassic Park for being ridiculous, make sure your own dinosaur movie doesn't have anything that could be ridiculed either. They escape by climbing on a boat and just cringing the T-Rex away. Well, I sure showed him who's boss. <laughs> this is so embarrassing, I hope I get a role in a real movie after this. In the shipyard they run into the raptors again. No, no, Mimos. Mimos. No. Mimos. Maybe they're about to communicate. Oh, please don't tell me Jurassic World ripped off this movie too. The kid crawls into a hole that looks big enough for the raptor to at least get its head and arms inside to eat that boy, but this time so stupid so he gets crushed by rocks. Now the kids are inside the crystal cave. Fun fact, there are real life crystal caves where the heat and lack of oxygen will kill you after 10 minutes if you don't wear any protective gear. God, I hope they spent more than 10 minutes in this cave. Somehow one raptor made it into the cave and he got the Sinonithosaurus. Off screen, the cute animal of this kids movie got taken off screen. Why did he not fly away? Why are there no bite marks? Why does the big raptor not immediately eat him? Why does he distract it with a book that's not even a shiny thing? Why is it actually working? Does this raptor just like to read? Is the fact that this raptor died for a book supposed to tell kids to read more or read less? No, come on, put it back. Come on, you don't need a bunch of old stuff cluttering up your room. So of course, the cute little dinosaur in this kid's movie doesn't die, it's not like he's a black kid. He imitates the sound of the crystals to activate them. If he hits the right frequency, I hope he's gonna explode. While the boy travels back to his time, the girl actually stays behind because she cares that much about her research. But then it turns out his old crazy aunt was the girl the whole time. Good thing there was no romantic tension between them or this would now be messed up on so many levels. And just like old Captain America at the end of the Avengers Endgame, it fucks up the whole timeline. So now she's suddenly no longer seen as a crazy person but as a celebrated scientist because she has real prehistoric Arthropleura remains in her notebook. But her age implies that when she escaped Dinosaur Island, she got transported back to the 1950s and aged normally until the present. So she would have had that notebook the whole time, so she could have redeemed herself much earlier. There's no reason she had to wait until the boy would have his time travel incident, because from her point of view it would have already affected her. How do you feel about the few critics out there who claim that this is merely a genus of giant centipede? That, my dear, is not a centipede. It's an arthropleura. 
Wow, what an iconic running gag to close your movie. And that was Dinosaur Island and I can see why so many people hate it. At the same time, I will say that there were some good ideas in this movie and the effects are decent compared to some of the other movies I've seen. However, everything else is just badly executed. The acting falls flat, the attempts at humor are lame, the dinosaur models are a bit too brightly colored, the animation movements are a little janky, all these factors mean there's no suspense in the creature scenes and the constant spouting of scientific phrases seems more obnoxious than educating. It's an arthropleura. An arthropleura. That's an arthropleura. Those are triceratops. This movie is somewhere between mediocre and bad, but there are definitely worse dinosaur movies out there. Like the following one. Dinosaur Island, not to be confused with Dinosaur Island or Dinosaur Island, answers questions I never asked. There's probably dinosaur porn out there with better production value than this. I first heard about this movie in the mid 2000s when I told my mother to look for dinosaur movies on Amazon. When we saw that this was labeled as an erotic film, we decided to buy Walking with Monsters instead. This low budget movie was produced by Roger Corman, who made the Carnosaur movies, and they reused his cheap dinosaur puppets and even some direct shots of Carnosaur. So great, now I don't have to ever watch or review those movies. According to one of the directors, Jim Wynorski, breasts are the cheapest special effect in the business. And he immediately makes this clear because the movie opens with a woman getting sacrificed to a dinosaur. Which only shows up after they take her top off and make her jiggle her breasts. But you wouldn't be able to tell because I have to censor it anyway. A part of my audience is too young to be allowed to see boobs. And I have to make sure I am a good role model for the kids. This is another Rick Raptor 105 animation video. I'm so proud of this community. Also, can I just rant about YouTube for a second? YouTube is fine with gory horror scenes, but you show one female nipple and the video gets either age restricted or outright deleted. Like, come on, what do you think a teenager is more likely to possibly witness in real life? A girl taking her top off or a boy getting decapitated by a crocodile? <laughs> A US Army troop crash lands on the island via movie editing because they didn't have the budget to film an actual plane crash. At least there is no old timey paleontologist girl to steal their precious cargo, like their knockoff Playboy magazine. And playpen. This is something we can really use. The protagonist of this movie is this comic relief guy, who I am assuming is supposed to be a stand in for the audience, even if he's missing at least 100 pounds and a neck beard. Jew? I resemble that remark. So, Schemer, you've seen this great one. What was it like? Well, you remember that transvestite hooker that Turbo tried to pick up on? There was this bimbo actress I was dating back in LA. What a piece. All he's missing is dropping the N-word. One of the soldiers gets killed by a hand puppet, but then they are saved by the girls. I actually believe that these puny creatures could succeed where our forefathers have failed? <laughs> wow, an actual cartoon sound. Maybe that sign on Niphosaurus is on this island too. You know, actually, we had nothing to do with this Captain Briggs. <laughs> Kinda crazy, you know. Our names cannot be spoken in your language. Wait, this is silly. We've got to call you something. I know, from now on, you're Miss April, Miss May, and Miss June. Can you say objectification? Hey, every schoolboy knows April comes before May or June. So the only men that don't want to be stuck on a deserted island are the sergeant and the captain. And conveniently one of them gets killed by a stop motion triceratops. The guy with the glasses is wounded, but a girl heals him by putting him into a magic wow. whirlpool and speaking some shaman gibberish. Hey folks, viewer mail time again. Oh, here's one from Sally, age 14. <clears throat> Dear Pig, aren't you interrupting the story at the most suspenseful part? Well, the answer is yes, Sally. Yes, I am. Keep those cards and letters coming. Teach me page 34. Page 34. Oh, in the magazine? Mm -hmm. Oh. Page 34. If it exists, there's porn of it. No exceptions. Page 34. Page 34. Page 34.
Do you think whoever came up with the rules of the internet got the idea for number 34 from this movie? The queen wants the man to die, so one of the girls challenges her to a fight, which is just a cat fight. I'm surprised they aren't mud wrestling. This isn't magic. This is chemistry. What is chemistry? It's something you two don't have. I don't exactly have a lot of experience with girls. What if I'm bad? Turbo, there aren't any other men on this island. Chances are she won't know the difference. Wow, this entire place is just a paradise for insults. Well, the water's volcanic origin gives it amazing regenerative powers. Um, prolonged intake may actually make the body younger. Well, it also means these women are a lot older than we think. I mean, they could be <clears throat> one, two, even three thousand years old. At this point, I'm surprised the women don't look like Japanese schoolgirls. So they get attacked by the T-Rex puppet from Carnosaur and hide in a cave that would be big enough for the T-Rex to reach in. It's just like the raptor in the other Dinosaur Island movie. Inside the cave, they run into another beast and the resolution of this video is so bad that I actually can't even see what it's supposed to be. But I do know what that cartoonishly huge egg is. It's a time machine, obviously. Do you know where dinosaur eggs come from? That may be the worst line to initiate sex I have ever heard. But these are not eggs. I know, but, but over easier scrambled. They look like breakfast to me. I don't know what's more fake, those dinosaurs or those orgasms. The queen tells the man that they have to kill the T-Rex or another virgin will be sacrificed. Oh, it's really quite simple. All you have to do is destroy the Great One. Just bring me his head, and then you can all live happily ever after. <laughs> it's weird that she's laughing about this. Wouldn't you be glad if these guys actually managed to kill the T-Rex? Are you enjoying sacrificing your tribeswomen? Also, there are no men on this island, so can these women even reproduce? Wouldn't they eventually go extinct if you keep sacrificing girls? Almost like the one we saw before? Yes, it's a thunder beast. No, a brontophere is a thunder beast. Now the big guy gets his chance to deflower a girl. But unlike the previous sex scenes, they cut away. Because a big guy having sex is not what the audience wants to see. Even the dinosaur doesn't want to watch that. The T-Rex is terrorizing the village by just standing there, menacingly. Somehow it still manages to bite the girl's arm, but of course these massive jaws and teeth only inflict a couple of scratches. Just like in Primeval. Anyway, the men finally take down the dinosaur with their firepower. Die, dinosaur dick. <laughs> That's either the best or worst one-liner ever. With the dinosaur defeated, our main protagonist and his girl are getting married and now the queen and the captain hook up. Ende. Uh, wait, Ende? Uh, this was a German copy? Well, I guess now I have to end this review in German too. Die Insel der Riesendinosaurier ist mieser Dreck. Die Handlung ist langweilig, die Charaktere sind unsympathisch, die vielen Zoten nerven, die Saurier sehen scheiße aus und wer den ganzen Film nur wegen 5 Minuten Titten sehen will, der weiß wohl noch nicht, was das Internet so alles zu bieten hat. Dinosaur Island, not to be confused with Dinosaur Island or Dinosaur Island, is the worst movie Mark Hamill has ever been in. You know what? I don't care what you think about Star Wars The Last Jedi. This movie is worse. So much worse. It's debatable whether it should actually count as a movie as the whole thing is only 40 minutes long. This was made by Colin Slater's Wolf Tracer Studios, who also made Rap City Street Kids Believe in Santa, which looks just as cancerous to the eye. Great grandma, you always know just what to say. <laughs> Despite being the visual equivalent of bloody diarrhea, these movies have quite prominent voice actors, which has spawned all kinds of crazy conspiracy theories. These movies are either scams where nobody gave a fuck, or they are passion projects created by someone with zero talent. And I don't know what's sadder. The movie begins on a ship, with our protagonists who look like blow up dolls even a blind pervert wouldn't want to have sex with. <laughs> <laughs> 
Look at those clouds. You may not in mobile JPEG in the background. Jack! I'm going after him. Don't be a fool. He's gone. Something tells me the red-haired captain with the eye patch that is willing to let him die is not a good guy. So somehow the ship gets through a portal and they strand on an island. Other side of this rock. You mean that JPEG in the background? That's impossible. You mean improbable. We know it's possible. Why are the girls in Dinosaur Island movies always such annoying smart asses? And then they run into this frog-eyed monstrosity that is supposed to pass as a dinosaur. Oh my. Hey! What do you think you're doing? <sighs> wow, that's an even more underwhelming reaction to a living dinosaur than in Dinosaur Island. Okay. Not good. Ah! 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 Look at it! Uh... This is fantastic! The only fantastic part is that I haven't gouged out my own eyes after watching this. Well, lack of feathers is the least problem of these raptors. No! We can't let nature take its course, so better kill the carnivores that just need to survive. Hungry? Eat this! Nah, she doesn't even need the bullets because she can just kick and jump over the raptors. And then she gets an awfully animated torch. I'm getting Jurassic Prey flashbacks. They get rescued by the Triceratops mother, but literally one minute later they're in the next raptor chase scene. Ever wanted to get motion sickness? One guy gets grabbed by a pterosaur. Uh, or at least I'm assuming that's what happens because the animation is so awful it makes the vine scene from Dinosaur Island look convincing in comparison. Of course, she manages to save him with a well-aimed headshot. This woman is a freaking Mary Sue. And since this nightmarish animation is supposed to be funny for children, of course the guy lands on his crotch and gets an atomic wedgie that would probably impale him on his pants. While they explore an ancient ship, the T-Rex shows up and it's such a shitty model I'm not even going to bother to find some music for it. And again they are in a cave where it should be able to get them. Why does every single Dinosaur Island movie have a scene of a dinosaur failing to reach into a cave? Patience, Blake. That's something you learn from fishing. Somehow I'm not very keen on being bait. Was it something I said? You are so boring it lost interest. They enter an ancient temple where we get to hear the great sound design for the T-Rex. How did you know you get used to these things after a while? But don't worry, they steal sounds from Disney's dinosaur too. But you matter. Just find the city. So this guy is a fraud. Come on, boys. Well, this movie has managed to make me appreciate the kids acting in Dinosaur Island. Dinosaurs! Then they run into a tribe of Aborigines whose mask may be the only thing in this movie that were designed to intentionally look creepy. Why does every Dinosaur Island movie also have a tribe of Aborigines? Can't there be an island that has just dinosaurs? That fucking running animation. They run like they're on a conveyor belt and just shit their pants. And in profile it looks like they're in an online game with a bad ping. And now, half an hour into this 40 minute movie, the protagonists explain why they even went onto this expedition. Blake, why did you sign up for that tour? Me? <laughs> I gotta ask you the same thing. Usually you start a movie with this, don't you? But now we get the stunning reveal of who's the evil mastermind behind all this. Captain Bud! The name is Blood. Captain Blood. <laughs> Mary Sue escapes by using an outdated Matrix reference and returns with an army of Triceratops. And Captain Blood escapes by teleporting with a magic crystal, like in the other Dinosaur Island movie. Where did he go to? When did he go to? I'll do you one better. Why did he go to? Now they built a raft to leave the island. Thanks, Troy. An adventure like this doesn't come along every day. Or an adventurer like you. I swear, if these dead I crash test dummies kiss, I'm gonna throw up. Somebody stop them, please. Yeah! 
you be going somewhere? So yeah, this movie ends with a random out of nowhere cliffhanger that will never be resolved. Just like Primeval! And if the movie wasn't baffling enough already, the credits have a chief science officer. Because this was such a scientifically accurate movie. And they also credit someone for legal affairs? What the hell happened on this production that you need to credit a lawyer in your movie? I guess someone realized this was a scam halfway through production. Within those two hours they must have spent animating this. So that was Wolf Tracer's Dinosaur Island and between this and Jurassic Prey it's really hard to say which one is the worst dinosaur movie of all time. Jurassic Prey is a boring movie that is just people walking around in the woods with a cheap puppet. Dinosaur Island has so bad animation that it's almost unwatchable. But just by virtue of being completely animated, more effort must have been put into this than into Jurassic Prey. And at least they got Mark Hamill. So I guess the take home message of all of this is, Dino Time is no longer even close to the bottom of the barrel. And if you ever want to make a dinosaur movie, don't call it Dinosaur Island because it will be doomed to fail. Well this upcoming documentary is fucked. 